Hey, welcome back to my YouTube channel, guys. Today, we're going to talk about things I don't spend my money on anymore now that I live in New Zealand. So of course, when you move overseas into a different culture, a different value system, different products that are even available, you change your spending habits. So today, I'm gonna to go through 10 things that I just don't really buy anymore now that I live in New Zealand. So make sure that you click the like button and the bell and subscribe below. If you've been following me for a while and haven't subscribed, please subscribe. This channel talks about what it's like living overseas in New Zealand as an American. Here we go. Of course, when you move to a different culture or maybe even a different city, if you're from a big country, you have to adapt to your environment. So I'm from the Midwest and so I have traded in my snow shovels <laughs> uh, for wetsuits, uh, for expensive school uniforms, and even a water jug to boil water uh, for tea. Now, they have these things in the US, obviously, but it's just the things that I personally started spending my money differently because I'm living in a different culture. So here we go. As an overall reflection, living in New Zealand, I would say you generally have to buy quality over quantity. So unlike the US, New Zealand, you can't buy anything and everything cheap. Now they have stores that are similar to Walmart and Target, which would be like the warehouse here in New Zealand where you can get a lot of things at a reasonable price, but not nearly as many as you can get in the US for a cheap price. And so you just end up having to decide what is important to you. And so you can't have everything when you live in New Zealand. You, can only, you only have a limited amount of money and things can be quite expensive, things that you don't expect to be expensive are expensive and so you have to adjust and so you adjust based on what's most important to you and where you're going to spend your money so the first thing that i don't spend my money on now that i live in new zealand is i don't own a house the real estate in new zealand is so expensive right now that it's it's can be very unaffordable for most people and including me like we continue to rent we're starting to get to a position where we can buy but it is the market is crazy and it's crazy expensive especially when you live in the bigger cities like Auckland or Wellington and so in the states though we were heavily involved in real estate investment and so you I mean you could buy a house we bought houses for twenty thousand dollars thirteen thousand dollars like really in bad shape and you have to put in like ten or twenty thousand to get it up and running and then renting it um, but that's all reasonable and you can do that but here of course you can do fixer uppers and of course you can get cheaper houses but we're talking like three hundred four hundred thousand dollars <laughs> that's a little bit different and limits your investment possibilities for us so for us personally we haven't been able to buy a house because the real estate is really expensive here in New Zealand the second thing that we used to spend our money on all the time in the US was going out to dinner it was very easy to go out to dinner multiple times uh, in a week and it was not that expensive. Like I could feed my whole family for $20, $30. My kids were much younger. I now have all teenagers. So yeah, that wouldn't be the case <laughs> anymore, but it just was, there's so many options and so at all different uh, price points. And it just was something that you do. I think, I don't know, it was more in the culture to do that. Whereas here in New Zealand, if we are going out to dinner as a whole family, it's a hundred dollars. And that's just not something that you can do often. Um, even takeaways can be quite expensive as well. And so we just don't eat out as much. And so then that kind of changes your culture as a family in terms of eating and going and options. And you have to be a little bit more organized <laughs> and you have to have meals kind of planned instead of like, ah, oh, I'm not ready to cook. We can just go out. Of course you can order takeaways here uh, in New Zealand and that's fine, but it's still quite expensive to feed a family of six. Uh, so it's just, you have to be on top of it and you just don't go out to eat as much when you live in New Zealand. Okay, the third thing that we don't spend our money on living in New Zealand is packaged food. You guys, I think that if you have never been to the US and you're a New Zealander or from Australia, I think you would be shocked at how many things are packaged in plastic in the US. And so that was an adjustment. So when you grow up in a culture and that's normal and every, you know, you can buy box cakes and box frosting and box everything. Like literally you want to make cookies, you want to make uh, macaroni and cheese, you want to make any sort of meal. It comes 
package for you so it's easy. You know, the cultures have changed. Men and women are both working. There's the people don't have time. And so the American market has adapted to that and has, um, you know, created products, packaged products that supposedly make your life easier, but definitely not better for the environment. So it's very common, especially with kids' lunches. So like Lunchables would just be kind of like everything a kid needs in a lunch and you could just throw it in for $2.99. <laughs> or um, just another thing that I don't buy here anymore in terms of food would be like cut up fruit, cut up cheese, cut up meats, you know, like cut up vegetables. Like they would sell those and you have them all cut for you and everything's easy. Like everything is real convenience in the US um, and not so much in New Zealand. It's growing, like I'm seeing it more. And it's also just not acceptable in this culture in New Zealand to put everything in plastic. In fact, if you go to the grocery store, there's no more plastic bags anywhere. You cannot get a plastic bag. <laughs> and, and that's a good thing. And it's a good adjustment. It has forced us all to bring our own bags or to use paper bags or to use boxes and to think differently about how we shop. And that's definitely a good thing. But it is an adjustment to not have any plastic at all in the house. <laughs> and, and it's good. And so also like in the kids' schools, like if they, my kids go to like enviro schools, which means like, yeah, they're definitely like, they're not supposed to come with their lunch with plastic in it or anything individually wrapped. I mean, it can be wrapped in like a beeswax wrap or um, some sort of, you know, reusable item, that's fine. But like, you can't really bring plastic. And so it's just kind of organized that way for you. So you buy the lunch boxes and it has a little slot and you put the things in, you put the lid on, it actually makes it quite easy. You know, like you think like you're being convenienced by getting, you know, the cut up apples and the cut up carrots and da da da, just throw it in and there you go. But really like it's, pretty easy just to cut it up and it's more fresh and hasn't been sitting in a plastic bag for God knows how long. And you just put it in and they go and they're off, and off to school they go. So it's just, it's better. And also the kids are, they're talked to if they are <laughs> bringing a lot of plastic to school. Like it's just a value here in New Zealand, which is a great thing. And my family has completely adjusted uh, to that. I wouldn't say like, I don't have any plastic in my house. Um, I do have some plastic bags and plastic wrap and you know, that's where I'm at with it, but it's significant improvement from when I started to get here. So I'm not quite there yet, but getting there guys. So this is a great thing. The packaged food is a really big difference. Like people like, it was new to me that everybody bakes like from scratch. Like the idea of making things from scratch is a new idea for somebody coming here from the US, <laughs> you know, and that, you know, you may have a family that does that and that may be the culture of your family, but I'm saying as a whole, as a general rule, it's just very normal for people to bake here every week or uh, to make a lot of things from scratch. And that just isn't the case. So that's just a different way that you're spending your money and a different way that you're cooking and different way that you're spending your time. And that's just like a big adjustment when you're living in New Zealand from the US. And number four, speaking of food, is I don't buy in bulk. So I've had some comments from you guys on my TikTok channel. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. It's great. Um, I talk a lot about the differences between New Zealand and the US. And basically what I've gotten feedback is they always are saying like, when I'm watching an American TV or movie, they always look like they have so much in their fridge. <laughs> and it's so true because Americans, we buy in bulk. We love our Costco. We love our Sam's Club, which are all wholesale big. They are getting a Costco here in Auckland soon and I cannot wait. Um, but yeah, so we buy things in bulk because it's cheaper and you know and we're used to packaged food and so i think that that's why it's different for a new zealander to see that um, i'm surprised when i came here when i'm looking at people's uh that have big families you know five people six people in their family and there's nothing in their fridge like like it's just not like what do you do like what if you do if, you know you come home and you don't feel like cooking and like you don't really have much or whatever i was pretty surprised you know whereas in the states you'll see people you know loading up with all their drinks their you know this just they're stocked up they this is pantries are a big deal in the u.s and they are here too like there's pantries here i'm not saying there's not pantries i've always had a pantry wherever i've rented but like yeah you just you just stock up a lot more in the u.s uh in terms of buying in bulk and number five plastic water bottles 
So people in New Zealand, we just have our own water bottle with your name on it. All my kids have one and we bring it everywhere. And when you go for a run or you go on a long hike, everybody has their water bottle. In the US, it's very common to have plastic water bottles that you throw away. And you might wonder, well, that's, why would you do that? You know, why wouldn't you do And there's plenty of people that carry their own water bottle. I'm not just saying that, but I'm just saying, I definitely don't buy plastic water bottles anymore. And I wouldn't say that I did a ton in the US either, but it was really a lot easier to because it was like $3.99 and you would get 12 water bottles or 24. It was so dirt cheap. It just made the convenience of it very easy. Not that it's right, but that it was easy. <laughs> and so sometimes, you know, so if you go to a party, it's just very common that people will have plastic water bottles in their fridge. And I'm sure that that's gotten a lot better as I've, I've th seen things change uh, in the US quite a bit since I've been there. But yeah, so plastic water bottles, not a thing in New Zealand. Definitely see it more in the US. And number six, holiday decorations. Now I wouldn't say that I was like a crazy holiday decorator by a long shot, but the ability to buy holiday decorations in the US does, is huge compared to New Zealand. New Zealand very much downplays holidays. There isn't lots of decorations at Christmas. There isn't lots of decorations on Valentine's Day comparatively. Okay, if you live here in New Zealand and you feel like there's a lot of decorations, let me tell you, you haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> and it's a little bit different because at Christmas, it's warm here. It's, you know, it's light out until 10 o'clock. So like Christmas lights don't really make sense. And so everything is a little bit different. And of course they decorate, uh, but it's not at the same scale. Because we all know in the US, it's like two months before <laughs> it's Easter or Christmas or Halloween or back to school. There's tons of decorations at every store. And this is like, ugh, it's almost sickening. And so I wasn't a huge decorator in the US, but I'm even less now, <laughs> like way less. <laughs> and so that's just another big difference. Things that you don't buy uh, living in New Zealand compared to the US. Okay, and number seven, I have to mention this, would be the latest fad. If you're not familiar, the US has fads where a big product comes up, everybody has to have it, and then it kind of fizzles. Okay, it's a very popular thing. And you're very much pulled into it when the fad is there. <laughs> Whether it's this new type of soy candle, or, you know, certain diet, or uh, essential oils, or certain types of vitamins, or the, uh, all different kinds of things. It's there's there's fads all the time, and there's even fads like for your kids. You know, at school, people are going through it. I mean, obviously, we've all seen that pop it thing, and that's been a big fad also here in New Zealand. It's not that New Zealand isn't affected, but the fads are much stronger, can last a lot longer in the U.S. So I find myself not spending money on fad type products <laughs> anymore. You do definitely get pulled in because everybody has it. Oh, it's great. It's new. It's going to improve this. This is going to make you look younger and this is going to make your hair amazing. And they're just, they're really good at marketing in the U.S. <laughs> and so I'm not pulled in. I'm not spending my money as much on the fad of the day here in New Zealand. Number eight that we don't spend our money on are kids toys. Now you will be shocked probably if you're from New Zealand at some of the houses in the U.S. and just rooms filled with toys, okay? And the reason for this is the advertising is really good. They're very cheap and, you know, everybody gets them and it's just kind of part of the culture. And so I wouldn't say that as a person in the U.S., I didn't spend a ton on toys, but I definitely even spend less here and my kids are older and so maybe that's part of it uh, so let me know your experience on that but just that's what I've noticed because like for example the prices are so much higher like a Lego set a nice Lego set is $70 here in New Zealand so people aren't having piles and piles of Legos like they do in the US when you can get it for 10 or 20 dollars 
okay? And so it's just, it's a, it's a very different mindset. And a lot of people are just active here in New Zealand. You know, you're outside a lot more. It's nicer weather all year round. And so that also affects, you know, what you're purchasing. But also like our family, we didn't have a TV since 2006. So I really have, I noticed when I was in the States how much that affected what my kids were asking for because they're not being advertised to. So a kid doesn't know, they have everything taken care of for, right? They have like food, shelter, they have everything they need. They got their wonderful parents. They don't know that they need something until the TV tells them that they do. <laughs> and said, you gotta get this. This is gonna be amazing. And then, oh, suddenly that's on their uh, birthday list, Christmas list. And you're like, where did you come up with that? So I noticed that once I took that out of their lives, I didn't get the magazines in the mail anymore, the catalogs in the mail anymore, um, that really helped. Like they don't know, they're not coming up with it unless they saw somebody at school have it and that's fine. Uh, and so, yeah, and so we've just always continued that. So I wouldn't say that I was a big consumer of toys in general in the US, but even less here. And we don't watch commercials really here either, you know, as it's all changed. So that's been really good. So be aware of that. Like if you're feeling like your kid always asking for these things, it's because they're being, they're watching advertisements. So it's helpful to limit it. It's okay, like if everybody at school is into something or trading cards or anything, you know, the latest thing and they want it, you know, because they want to participate with your friends, like that's different. But when it's advertising, that's very manipulative and really makes them feel like they need something that they really don't or that it's going to do this amazing thing that it really doesn't <laughs> because you know as a parent and they don't, <laughs> they're very believe, they just believe what they hear, right? And so uh, just be aware of that. But yeah, so I definitely spend less on that sort of thing here in New Zealand because the kids more are more active and doing stuff outside and riding bikes and scootering and uh, trampolining and all that sort of thing instead. And so, so much better. So definitely spend less money on toys in New Zealand compared to the US. Okay, number nine, I think you might find it interesting that in New Zealand, you don't have to buy these babies. You don't need to buy checks. Yeah, you don't use checks here in New Zealand. In fact, they're, they're phasing them out completely. Uh, this year in most banks. And so you cannot even like, if someone writes me a check from the US, so I still have grandparents or whatever sending their kids checks, please don't send checks because we cannot cash them here. People don't use checks. So how do they pay for things you might ask is, well, the most common is PayWave. And it's accepted, I would say like 98% of the places here in New Zealand and you just go boom and you're off. It's so easy and it's amazing. The other thing that they have in New Zealand that's amazing is bank transfer, like right from your personal account to someone else's personal account or a business account or however you do. So people just share their bank account numbers and you just put the money into their account. And it's so easy. There's no third party. So in the US, you generally have to have a third party. Like uh, sometimes it's your bank, you know, you could do online banking or it could be PayPal or Venmo or all these other different companies that have come up and made money off of this. Uh, but you know, you have to pay them a fee or, whatever, fee or whatever, but this is just like directly into someone's account. So if I bought something off of Facebook Marketplace or off a of Trade Me, I can just go in and pay them directly into their bank account and it's amazing and it makes things uh, very easy. And so you might wonder, is this secure? Is this good? Yes, New Zealand banks are some of the most secure banks in the world. Check it out, look it up. This is not what this video is about. <laughs> but yeah, so it's so cool to not have to spend any money on checks. So you may not be aware that in the US you do have to pay for these. So I don't remember how much they are, like $20 or something. It's not overly expensive, but you do have to buy them and you do use them and you will still see people at the grocery store filling out a check in the US but you will not be seeing that in New Zealand. And number 10, last but certainly not least, let's talk about clothing. Clothing expectations and the amount of money that you spend on clothing is very different in New Zealand compared to the US. So let's talk about this a little bit. And I think it's a little bit around cultural differences. I think it's also around a consumerism society. The US is much more consumerism and they also have a lot of product <laughs> and so, and you can get that product for sale. And so things go on sale and you're finding like these Nike sweatshirts for $5 or on a clearance rack or these amazing, you know, and it almost feels as when you're there, it almost feels like it's wrong not to buy it. 
it's so cheap, <laughs> you know? And so that gets you and then just gets you in your consumerism society. And then like, depending on where you live in the US, you have all different seasons. So I'm from a state that has all four seasons. So you need different clothes for different seasons and things are just cheap. And so it's easy to buy a couple new things per season, per person in your house. So you end up spending a lot more money. Whereas in New Zealand, there isn't a lot of choice on clothes and shoes and that sort of thing, which actually makes your life a lot easier. <laughs> and everything's expensive. So like a shirt like this would be like $60 here in New Zealand. And so you have to really like it if you're gonna spend $60, whereas you could go to Kohl's in the US and find this for $3.99 on a clearance rack. You don't have to love it, you just have to like it. And so you end up just accumulating a lot more clothes. And so you even notice probably in my YouTube channel, if you follow me a lot and watch videos, you'll see a lot of the same clothes. And that's also culturally normal here in New Zealand, like for people to wear the same clothes. Nobody's like, oh girl, did you just wear that yesterday? Nobody says that to you here. <laughs> everybody knows, everybody is, it's kind of, goes along the same lines of sustainability when we talk about plastic and being um, you know, environment friendly. People like that you're wearing the same thing. They like that you are being sustainable and not you know, um, buying all of these things. It's just, it's different. The culture is different in the way that they look at it. So that was really noticeable for me when I moved here and like I was taking my kids to school every day and I was noticing, okay, so people are wearing the exact same stuff for like multiple days. <laughs> and that was a new idea for me. And I loved it because it takes like all that pressure off of like, oh, well, I can't wear that. I wore that yesterday and da -da -da -da. and like, oh, I got to, you know, I got to wear this to the gym and then this to this. And it just gets to be like, <clears throat> so here, nobody cares. In New Zealand, everybody, nobody cares. Like I haven't been to many functions that you really dress up. Um, you generally look nice. Like I'm impressed with like when you go into the CBDs, like professionals look really nice. Um, so I'm not saying that people don't look nice. They definitely look nice, but there isn't this expectation that you own 50 different suits. Okay. It would be totally appropriate to have, you know, two or three suit jackets and you just kind of switch them out and that's normal. And it also kind of comes into play with schools because a lot of the schools have, uh, like formal, school uniforms and so people are wearing the same thing every day and that's just kind of normal and normal in the culture and they're really nice so i my kids had school uniforms in the states which wouldn't i wouldn't say is the norm but it was just easy like a polo and you, know, you didn't buy it from the school it was just like khaki pants and a polo whereas here it's like a full uniform with wool you know things that need to be dry clean blazers ties even the girls tights, you know, and like, and it's good. And it just makes your life easier. Now it's quite a bit more expensive when you first buy it. Let me tell you those school uniforms are expensive, especially if you have multiple children <laughs> and I'm like, Oh gosh, just give me the minimum. But they do have cool options where you can buy them secondhand or, you know, uh, mothers work together. Let's just say that. <laughs> and so, and yeah, so you have to buy a lot up front, but it just makes your life a lot easier. The kids don't have to decide what to wear. You don't have to be buying a lot of clothes. You don't go shopping very much. I very rarely go to the mall. I don't like shopping to begin with. Like I wasn't a big shopper in the States, but I definitely went a lot more when I was in the States than I am here. And so like, even with shoes, like you just need a really good pair of shoes and you just wear them every day. And it's just really good. It just makes life easier, <laughs> in my opinion. So sometimes it gets annoying, especially when it's very difficult to travel to the US right now to get some clothes at reasonable prices. But it also makes you take a step back and to check, do I really need this? I already have, you know, one of those or two of those. Do I really need another one? And it's just, it's good. And you just get into that habit of not being materialistic about your clothes and nobody else is really around you. And it's really nice. As an American here in New Zealand, it's really nice. Well, I hope you enjoyed my video this week. We talked a little bit about the things that I don't spend my money on now that I live in New Zealand. So definitely comment below and let me know what things you don't spend your money on or what you notice when you move to a different culture or a different city. And just so you guys know, I am coming out with an American recipe ebook for all you New Zealanders out there and how to make American recipes with New Zealand ingredients. So click the link below if you want to pre-order and let me know some recipes you'd like to be in there. That would be great, but definitely subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, subscribe, hit the bell, uh, like the video if you like the video, and I'll see you next week.